Welcome to the Greenwich Means Business podcast. Hello everyone and welcome back to the Greenwich Means Business podcast. Today we're joined by two current students who are on the programme on international business. Would you like to introduce yourselves and tell us what you're studying or what you've just finished studying? Yeah, thank you. Hello everyone, uh, my name is Halcyon Vichamathieu. I'm an MP international business student. I have completed my studies and I'm currently working at the university as Standard and Partnerships Officer. Hello everyone, my name is Ishan Thakkar and I'm a second year international business student. So my first question is, Greenwich, the University of Greenwich. How did you find out about the University of Greenwich? What was your process of choosing this university over another? Did you want to tell us first? Yes. So uh, I'm an Indian and I always want to do an MBA degree. So for us, for us, it's always the IAMs. That's the Indian Institute of Management. They are the premium institutes for pursuing MBA degrees. And um, it takes a lot of preparation to get into an IAM because there's an exam called the CAT, that's the Common Aptitude Test. When I considered about doing an MBA from India, I have to crack the CAT exam first. That is going to take around like one to two years of preparation and then it involves a lot of financial obligations and then um, I will not be able to start working until I complete my course on a full-time basis and I would still be a fresh graduate. And it was my sister who already came to the University of Greenwich. She did her master's at the Kent campus and she did MSc in food innovation. So when she left to UK, I was like, why can't I go to an abroad nation and then do a master's degree? But there were many questions and then there were many challenges that I had to face. So the first question obviously was which country? There was a trend in India when students were going abroad to countries like Canada, UK, US, Australia. I definitely don't want to go to US or Australia due to various news that I have been hearing since then. And then um, the second priority was Canada. But based on my research, I came to find that I can't do a proper MP program in Canada. And the temperature was a big issue back then. It was extreme weather climate. Then anybody was going to be UK because my sister was already here. And then the next question, which university? And uh, I informed one of my agents in India that I want to do MP in UK. I asked them if he could refer some good universities. And they shared me a list of five, six universities and University of Greenwich was one among them. But still I want to do a research of my own and I came across 19 universities. So I started filtering out one by one based on the eligibility requirements, the, the fees, uh, the location, everything. Um, I had to strike out most of the institutes because of the work experience that they were demanding. Usually an MPA student has to have had to have uh, three to five years of experience. And I was still a fresh graduate. I graduated in 2021 and I applied to the University of Greenwich in 2021. So there's no way I could get into these institutes because of lack of experience. Second thing was uh, the GMAT. So similar to CAT exam to get into the top institutes in UK, the Indian students have to give an exam. It's called the GMAT. Um, so again, if I have to prepare one to two years for CAD, then I have to prepare another three years for GMAT. Then at the end, it came to two universities. One was University of Greenwich and the other one was the Coventry University. The third thing that I considered was the location. So University of Greenwich was based in London. And when I was going through the university's website, I came across the name Canary Wharf. So that's the London's premier financial hub. And I knew that most of the companies are based in Canary Wharf and then in Central London. So my thought process was like, if I can get into University of Greenwich, then I can connect with these industries and I can build a career within London. And then after one or two appointments with the agents, I finally decided that University of Greenwich is the best choice for me. And then I went uh, course by course. And then I had uh, a couple of conversations with the previous alumni. And finally, it came down to University of Greenwich. And uh, I'm really happy that I got to here because I've made some really good friends here, some great connections, and I'm working for the University of Greenwich now. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, that's quite a nice story. But you did a lot of thinking and a lot of research beforehand. Yes. I can tell, which is good. I mean, you need to. Yeah. In that sort of situation. Yeah. It was going to be a big decision and a tougher one for me because I don't want to mess up. It's uh, going to be an abroad nation, people that I don't know about. And a totally new experience for me. So I want to take a calculated risk. 
Mm-hmm. That's why I had to do a lot of research. I guess almost five to six months of research I put into it. Wow. And then I get into the University of Greenwich. So it was in January 2021. That's when my sister bought at her flight. It was the same night I decided, okay, I'm going to go to UK. She's bought in her flight and you're thinking, okay, I'm going to that country as well. <laughs> yes, yes, yeah. Okay, that sounds nice. Yeah, what about you? So like answering the first question, how I find the University of Greenwich, then I would say amazing. Because this is the place that I always wanted to spend my crucial time of life because I'm doing undergrad, I'm spending three years of my life here. And how I chose the University of Greenwich. So initially I had like four to five options in my mind. But according to my requirements and what I want from a university, uh, Greenwich was my top priority. And the first, the, the Greenwich school the reputation around the companies and in the community, as well as they have the good business management programs. And then like before, I, when I was in India, I was searching about the course. I looked out the, 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 the page of the course. And when I researched about what I can get from the university, it was not just a traditional course that I will be getting, but it was more than from the lectures. For example, I found about what University of Greenwich and the business school has to offer. For example, generator, because a student like me who wants to do business in a future or maybe have a consulting career in life. So a generator is a very best option because when I saw that not I'm going to learn from the lectures only, but generator can be a part where I can do simple application of what I'm learning into the generator. So during the year or the last year, I have attended a few of the generator events, for example, hackathons, GRE start programs, enterprise challenge, and this is the same, just I'm not learning what I'm doing actually, but also I applied. So that's why I already searched everything before I came here. And this was the combination of learning also application was only option in the Greenwich according to my requirements. So I opt for Greenwich as well as the location because even you feel like you are in the countryside as well as you can see from your campus, you have the Thames River and also can dream of you. I mean, this, this is the best view you can ever have. So yeah. That's a very good point. It's not many uni campuses that have the greenery mm-hmm. of a park, a royal park as yeah, well, and yes. then the River Thames on the other side. Yeah. yeah, you can actually see the where you want to be, your MNC's companies and the Kennedy Wharf from when you are in the university. So yeah, yeah, it's I would say it's one of the beautiful campus um, in London. Uh, when I decided to visit Greenwich, I went through the maps. I literally went through each and every building, and I was on like, Google oh Maps. Yes, <laughs> yes, yeah. I was like, it was a very big building, uh, and then once I got down here. My one class was in Queen Mary building, mm-hmm. the other one was in Stephen Lawrence building. I literally had to run. And mm-hmm. that was a very big campus. But I really like, um, I mean, most of the films were shot in this campus. Uh, so it's actually a historic place and it's quite famous. Yeah, yeah, there is a lot of history. Yeah. Yeah, I've been on one of the tours that the old Royal Naval College yes. facilitates. And if you haven't been, I highly recommend it. Yeah, I've but been. Yeah. But you've been? Yeah, oh, yeah. Yeah. yeah, they're fun. Yeah, it's actually fun. Um, um, before I actually made the decision, I didn't know that there was too much history behind the the buildings over here. Uh, and I guess it's there in the Stockwell Street, the library. So I think in the, gr- the ground floor, they have the history written down over there, over the walls, how the University of Greenwich came and uh, what was this building before. So, yeah. Did you both apply for an agent? What was your application process like? Or did you apply independently? Did you have to go for an agent? Yes, so uh, one of the authorized in-country representatives, they helped me throughout my application process. They were the same agents who helped my sister, so we approached the same agents as well. Yeah. And um, the process would be pretty much the same for every student. After me, my friends also use the same agents. So we first applied, uh, I mean, the agents applied on our behalf. So we have to send our documents, the academic transcripts, um, a CV, a statement of purpose, we call it as the SOP. Mm-hmm. Uh, all the documents will be submitted to them and they will be submitting to the University of Greenwich portal on our behalf. So once I guess the academic team, sorry, the admissions team, once they go through all the documents that we submit, they will give us the conditional offer letter and we have to meet the eligibility criteria like the language requirements and then a deposit amount. So once this is paid, we get the offer letter, which is going to be an unconditional. And then the regular visa process that involves behind. Uh, so I would say usually it takes 
for me around um, five to six months again because I made my application very early. But what takes what took so long was the visa process. I think it was because of the COVID time, the immigration policies, the uh, traveling from UK to from India to UK, it was requiring a lot of time. So I guess that actually made this delay. But my friends, for them, it took almost I think three months. Yeah. Okay, so a little bit shorter. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, that makes sense. Was it very similar to you? For me, the application was same similar because as an international students you have to go through more step in comparison to, in comparison to the home students and for me the step uh, like uh, it was like for application process when i need to submit my official academic transcript then financial requirements also passport information the next step was uh, getting a uh, application from the university so i got around like in less than 24 hours i received my offer letter Yes, and it was very quick because when I applied in the late time and it was around mid August yeah. and on that generally university have some clearing so they work on applications very quicker. So after that I had a case interview and then after receiving all the documents from the university as well as from myself, I submitted my visa application process. And during that I want to mention that if any upcoming student is coming, so I can suggest that like between the, any of the process, if you are depending on the private agents or yourself, always keep in touch with the university because, because usually interest department is always helping on the all step because uh, even when I was applying, I had some doubts and also problems, but usually a private agent cannot solve everything for the particular university. But if you keep in touch with the admission department, they're going to give you your personalized doubts and everything so it's gonna be much easier and you can trust the process as well and also sometimes if you if you can check your university email usually university organizing some workshops I mean kind of initial uh, workshop that you can attend and get your answers from the admission department so that way you can make your process faster as well as trustable as well yeah that's a good point actually there are so many uh, even the open days, you can do the open days virtually, but there are webinars and there are webinars specifically for international students as well. You just have to check the website, not, not you in particular, but whoever is thinking of applying, if they're yeah. an international student, just have a look on the website okay. to see what's what's on. And then you can actually speak to admissions or the recruitment team who would be able to you know, answer those questions. Yeah. 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 yeah, I mean, all the resources are available there on the university's website and even if there are, uh, if, even if a, any student has any doubt about the admission process, then um, I think the Digital Student Center or the, the chat board in the university's website can literally send a message and then if the chat board can't solve a question, then I think it will be referred to the right department and then they'll take it off it. Yeah, yeah. and it's real people behind that chat box as well. <laughs> it's, yes. not, it's not a robot. Yeah. It's student ambassadors usually. Yeah, it yeah. gets connected to a student ambassador at the end uh, if the chat board can't answer the question. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, lovely. Okay, so moving on. Why international business? You're both studying international business, but on different levels. One is undergrad, one is postgrad, and MBA. Um, should we go with undergrad? Why international business? So, so initially, like uh, when I chose like this course, uh, like first my initiative was like I'm coming from business family background, and I also wanted to do business in my future. But of course, I can learn from my father, but I want to go for the fundamentals. And also in India, it's a very competitive to get admission in the top universities due to a lot of publics we have. So that's why I, I made a decision to go abroad. And also, I mean, I can do a business management or any business courses, but why international business? Because maybe in the future, if I want to move back to my country or any other countries, if I go through the course of international business uh, there are some modules like uh, cross-culture management future path and where i'll not just learn about the concept of the business but it's overall how in any kind of in, in any place of work in most of the mnc's like multi corporation uh, companies i can do job and even it's not making my knowledge limited because the way i'm learning international business course it makes me to think about strategy future markets and also a particular country's concept, so interest and because of this course. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, 
Does that make sense? So on a global scale rather yeah, the than global scale, yeah. specific to one country or one government or anything like that? Well, for me, it was mainly due to my bachelor's degree in commerce that was uh, an honours degree with specialization in banking and finance. So I was more inclined towards the finance side. But um, for a bachelor's student in India, then the next option is either a master's in commerce or master's in business administration. So obviously, for me, I wanted to do an MBA degree, but I never thought that it was going to be an international business. So once I chose the University of Greenwich, I, um, I checked what kind of options do the university have and then it was marketing and international business. Marketing wasn't really my cup of tea because I have done internships in marketing before and then I realized maybe people, there are people who can do better than me in marketing. So marketing was never my choice. And then it was the international business. But the actual decision was made when I checked the, the, the modules in international business. So it was mainly the global strategy, corporate governance, international business finance, the accounting, everything. So. The modules actually helped me to choose that this is going to be my perfect choice. So that's how I came into the international business. But there's something more that I want to add to this question. It's about the placement that was offered in the second year of MPA degree. So my calculation was that once I complete the MPA degree, I'm going to get a one year of work experience. So I won't be a fresh graduate. I would be having one year of experience and I'm an MPA graduate. And I can use that one year of experience to apply for the companies. So that's how I chose the MBA international business. And um, since I said that I was more inclined to finance, um, since I saw the business finance in the modules and then the accounting and finance as well. So I chose um, international business would be the perfect choice for me. Mm -hmm. And it's definitely business and it's going to be international. So anywhere in the world, this degree is going to be applicable and I can use uh, the degree and leverage to my level. Yeah, a lot of people do say that they appreciate the fact you can study for one year and then work full yeah. time for the yeah. other year, all as part of your degree. Yeah, I would say that is one of the um, um, one of the main USPs of the University of Greenwich, because when I checked the other universities during my research, um, they require the work experience. And even if you get into the MBA program, either there won't be any work experience or any placement program, and it's going to be just one year. So I can stay in UK for two years to complete my program and then use the other two years for my stay back period. So a total of four years in total, I can be in UK and use that amount of time to create a career for me. So that was a big calculation that I made. It's always like a return on investment for my side. Yeah. yeah. A lot of planning, a lot of calculations. That is one of my biggest strengths, I would say. I do a lot of planning. Even I mentioned the same during my first interview that I gave to the University of Greenwich, that I do a lot of planning. And once I'm convinced with my own plans, only then I proceed. I like it. What can you do with a degree in international business? A what? job. <laughs> a job. <laughs> what are the career options? Like, it doesn't sound like it's a very limiting degree. It's not very niche or very specific to one area, but what are some options? What do you hope to do after you've both finished? I know you're in different stages of your career and different stages of your studies, but yeah, what can you do? I would say the options are not limited. It's mm -hmm. very unlimited. I mean, a student from MBA background, they can do anything that is part of a business. Either it, it's part of a financial part or a strategy formulation, corporate governance, sustainability, accounting and finance. So the options are not limited. Mm -hmm. uh, I would say it's actually the passion of a student, what kind of career they want to pursue and then focus into that. For me, it was more into the finance side and I have done internships into that. But right now more into the administrative part so that's something that I that I love to explore about how a business functions on a normal day to day business, and how to actually manage a project or a team or be part of a directorate. So for me, it's always varied, and I'm exploring my options one by one. This is really something similar to what I did during my bachelor's. I had a huge doubt, what will I do with my bachelor's degree? And back then, it was one of the podcasts that I was listening to. Uh, the person mentioned that if you're not sure about what kind of career that you want to pursue, go for internships and then use different internships to understand what sort of career that you want. So back then I used to do a lot of internships. I mean, I guess I have done nine internships in almost five companies in three years. You've done nine internships in five companies. Yes. I was so crazy about internships. I want Did to you study? <laughs> yes. <laughs> and I scored the best marks. So wow. it was always a challenging thing for me. Uh, and plus the planning, obviously. My class timings were mostly in the morning time. 
So I used most of my evening time for internships. Okay. And then I used to study in between. And so those nine internships actually helped me to realize that this is what I wanted. This is not what I wanted. Something that I really liked was about the leadership internship uh, I have done. So I really like to do it. Uh, the internships that I didn't really much like much or um, the ones I couldn't perform really well was the graphic designing internships or the marketing ones. It requires a lot of planning, strategies and everything. For me, I couldn't pull it off. But I understood that this is not my cup of tea. Mm-hmm. That was it's a nice huge, that you tried. Yeah, well. it was a huge uh, realization. And I used all these nine internships to build my LinkedIn profile, I would say. That was one of the main agenda when I started doing the internships. I want to build a very good LinkedIn profile, something that is appealing to the employers. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So uh, to answer your question, so options are not limited. Um, once you start doing a job uh, with an organization, you learn that there are many options within the same field and then you can go up. So there always will be a career progression. And once you get into the field of corporate, you learn that there are many options. So MBA, international business degree, is just a stepping stone. From there onwards, once you step into the corporate world, to your career world, that's when you actually learn that there are many options. So most of them, we won't be able to uh, understand at the first go. But once you go to it, then you learn a lot about it. Well, that's true. Like, international business is a very broad, it can give you a lot of opportunities. So in perspective of undergraduate student, I would say, you can, as in it's, it's international business, you can get your career on or you can start your corporate life in any MNCs around the world. Uh, in terms of the sector, I would say in logistic, in private sector, government sector, then you can do import export, you can work in different startups, you can work in any financial companies like JP Morgan, PwC, in top big four companies. And also, of course, if you have a uh, undergraduate degree you can do masters and phd as well and for example for me like right now i'm doing internship with pwc so as an international business course like i'm doing consulting with them so of course you can have a like potential career like me in any mnc's have like under sectors like consulting and everything so it's a very broad and it depends on what you want to achieve in your life either it's a job either it's your business or either anything you want to do in your life so yeah So you've both done internships. How did you get these internships? How did you find out about them, apply for them in the first place? Because I feel like one of the first hurdles is getting an internship. Once you're there, it's great. You can put everything into it. But how how did you get them? What would you recommend for students that want an internship? Say in their first year, they don't really know what to do or where to go. So uh, in my case, uh, for us, it's called the placement. Even I used to say it's an internship, but it's actually a placement. Um, that's and because is I, it still part time and short or no? Uh, it's a full time one. I mean, okay. Yeah. yeah. So I worked as a placement son internship assistant within the employability directorate. Mm-hmm. That was my placement. So it's a placement job within the placement team as a placement assistant. Uh, mm-hmm. I like the way. So for me, um, I think I started applying and searching about for placements that I came to United Kingdom. I found a student whose testimony was there on the No Cities website. So I found her in Instagram because I couldn't get her ID in LinkedIn. And then I asked her about how to do a placement in uh, in my second year of MBA. And then she gave me a couple of tips and that I have to follow. So the first one was from day one at the University of Greenwich, I have to start preparing for my placement year because I have to rewrite my CV based on the UK standards, the cover letter, prepare for the interviews, psychometric test, uh, online aptitude test, etc. So I would say from day one onwards, it required a lot of extensive preparation from my side. And then I was keep applying for placements from my second day of the first year. There were many rejections, but it was always my need that I have to get a placement. And uh, I guess I applied to almost nine positions in five companies again. And then the University of Greenwich, we have the Employability and Apprenticeships Directorate, and they were offering MBA placement opportunities to the MBA students. And then I applied, and then out of the four placements that were offered, I got into the placements and internships assistant. So that was actually a, a turning point in my academic and career life, I would say, because I got to work with an amazing team. So that's the placements and internships team. And then I completed my placement as placements and internships assistant. So in the job role, I felt, I think, almost 
every undergraduate students in getting their sandwich placements, build some amazing partnerships with employees in London. And then I actually got to talk to all the students except the MBA students because they have their own MBA placement team. Mm -hmm. So for the MBA students, the MBT team or the MBA placement team, they are the right people to advise and guide you to find the right placement, I would say. But it's not just about the team, it's about the willingness to do this and uh, a lot of preparation is required from the student side. Yeah. So students must be really ready and they have to do a lot when it comes to a placement search. Yeah, you need to be proactive otherwise. Yeah, yeah. The so, opportunities are not going to come to you. Uh, opportunities will never come to you. I mean, there are a lot of opportunities out there because when I worked as a placement assistant, I found that there are many opportunities. It's the students that they're not applying. There was a time where I've literally called all the students in a class, seeking them, asking them, are you interested in this placement opportunity? And I couldn't know from their side. But if it was me on their side, I would have said, yes, yes, I want this placement. And then uh, it's just not one or two times of uh, creating a CV draft. For me, I think more than 10 or 15 times I've recreated my CV based on my strength, based on the experience, based on what job I'm applying to. So it's almost, I would say, a term full of preparation. In my case, it was a year because I don't want to miss out any opportunity. All the employability events, the big picture seminars, the talks, um, presentations, everything I've been part of. Yeah, so that's how I got my placement. Uh, it would be a bit different when it comes to the undergraduate students. For the MBA placement students, it's an 11 month placement. So we are limited by options because the companies, they want uh, students for 12 months. MBA students can't do a 12 month placement that's 11 month. So again, that was a challenge, but somehow we, we were able to get the placement. Yeah, okay, I understand. What about for internships, the, one, the type of internship that you completed or your PwC internship, how did you find that opportunity? So, like initially I would start with that, like for the internship and this kind of opportunities, you need to be enough proactive because opportunities are everywhere. But in general, if I talk about, always check your student mail because from all the departments, you might get all the pop-ups of any openings or might have followed the official page of University of Greenwich, for example, employability team, than business school because they usually offer and post about placement and internships every time and to more on add that uh, you can always um, have a dropping sessions from employee team where usually university helps you if you want to have an internship they actually guide you through the, all the steps about the internship how you can get it how you can acquire and to more on that I'm talking about my internship experience so I was always be proactive when I get any kind of opportunity and as an undergraduate student I just finished my one year and I, I finished also my two internships so one internship it's it's like thing specific because my course is generally offering uh, experience I mean summer course where you can have so I got fully funded internship from the thing specific about like university paid around 500 pounds for myself and I got a chance to do an internship on the NGOs and government level in the Fiji country. So it, wow. it was a virtual internship. And I actually worked with a woman entrepreneur who had a traditional business in the Fiji and I helped and made a guide for them to launch their online business. And talking about the second opportunity. So I in my life, I always aim for aim for high. For example, if in the future, if I want to earn 100, 100 pounds, I will aim for 1000 pounds. But by the end of the day, at least I will have more than 100 pounds. So like initially, I picked the big, big companies like, uh, for example, PwC's top big four companies, JP Morgan and everything. And initially, I got failures because that application process was very tough. They have different assessment days, interviews and everything. But because of that, I got three cons uh, constant failures. But at the last, when I practiced enough for the PwC interview, I actually got in. And initially, in the first year, I did uh, uh, the I mean early career careers where I went to PwC Manchester office for doing three days of consulting internship, where I learned about depth in the PwC, how it works, and about consulting and everything. And also, like for the in general if you are if you want to move and more research about outside of the university you can always find every all the opportunities on different website for example find my placement 
uh, LinkedIn careers where you can have different opportunities. And also like if you um, find a people, for example, a brand ambassador of any companies who are promoting any career opportunities of their company. For example, right now, uh, PwC made me a brand ambassador for the company. So right now I'm not looking for the internship, but I'm offering them as all the student internship and career opportunities to, uh, to all the universities in London. So like this is the way you can contact with them to talk about the stage process where you can ease your application process and you can understand better about the interview process and how the selection process work in the different companies. Yes. This By doing this, you can improve a chance in comparison, in comparison to other students because you have some and sometimes they can flag up your applications. So it's always better to talk personally with them. Yeah. yeah. And then this kind of brings me on to the question of, you know, when you need experience to get work experience, how did you get your first work experience in the first place? Was it in the ways that you already said, just apply? Or was your very first work experience voluntary? So like, uh, I mean, it's a very good question because, for example, if in the future, if I want to be a some kind of position, for example, in our university, we have student societies. In the student societies, we have different roles, for example, president, a financial director, event management. And this is the volunteer roles that you can do and you can learn from their courses. And right now, uh, I opt for the same because I wanted to pursue my career in the consulting as well as in the finance. So I become a financial director. And even in the future, if I apply to any of the roles in any companies, when they see uh, experience work, experience about financial director, in my CV, of course, they would prefer me more than comparison to other students. Yeah. And even by doing this, you are not just actually giving your, <clears throat> yourself a chance to learn, but actually by involving in these activities, the same thing that I think like learning and application at the same time while you are doing your university. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. For me, it was quite a different story because uh, like I said, when I came to know that the best way to get experience is to or to find what career is right for you to, to find internships yes. so the next question was where will I find the internships so most of my friends they advise back in college uh, go to LinkedIn and find the opportunity but you know to submit a CV I don't have anything in my profile it's just my educational achievements and then I realized one of my uncle he runs a tea factory in uh, from the place I come from and then I asked is it possible for you to give an internship um, I don't want it to be paid if it's unpaid I'm, I'm happy about it all I want is an experience and he was happy to give it to me. So I guess the first three or four internships that I did was unpaid. All I was cared about getting that experience. And learning. And learning, yeah, definitely. So since the only the first internship was um, I have to go to the office and get experience, all the other internships were virtual ones. So I don't have any cost in traveling or anything to buy, nothing like that. So it was... Since it was virtual, um, I didn't really care about the money. But then I guess from the 6th or 7th internship onward, since I had an experience in my CV and profile, I asked them, is this paid? And then some of them, they were able to pay me. But still, um, what matters to me was the experience, uh, which was again used when I started searching for placements here. And uh, in UK, to get an internship or a placement, I won't say it's easy, but it can be made easy if you use the employability's uh, resources and help. I'm sure the ones who sent uh, Ishan the emails were from my department and mostly it was by me. I'm sure it was. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. yeah, it was from you because when you, after like we had a talk in the dropping session, you have shared me on the materials for yes. the placement year internship and it really helped me because you not only shared the website, but you shared the whole the process, even how if you get the internship, how you can get the credits from the university as well. So, yeah. so um, if a student can literally help another student to get a placement Definitely. or an internship, it would be more effective. So that's something that I did when I was part of the placements and internships team. So yeah, uh, getting experience was the first prior thing. I didn't really care it was paid or unpaid, but that was a different story in India. Uh, my family was able to support me financially, but here, there are opportunities. You have to use the employability resources and the employability service help to find the right internship or the right placement and then use your experience or skills to get into that position. And then um, here it should be, it's a law that students must be paid for whatever work they undertake. So um, it's 
possible and uh, all this all the, what the student have to do is to prepare for it yeah. okay thank you it's very useful information there final question what do you hope to do next oh that's <laughs> that's another big question <laughs> for me that's the next question that i'm facing now yeah. so are uh, you trying to figure it out or do you do you know where you're going from here? i have multiple options in front of me i'm confused which one i should go for um, so when I was doing my placement with the employment directorate, I met a lot of professionals from different companies and that includes one of the vice presidents from the JP Morgan. And when I shared my career aspiration with him, he was ready to refer me. So that's one option that's in front of me and I'm working with the university as tenants and partnerships officer. I have one year of experience working in the higher education and I really love the working culture here. It's a proper work-life balance. Um, the projects that we are doing or the services that we are providing. That's something that I really love and care about. So higher education is the next option for me, or I could uh, do something that is part of my degree. So something like uh, financial or auditing or consulting. So there are options in front of me and I'm a bit confused which one I should go for. At the moment, I'm working as Samsung Partnerships Officer. I guess I'm gonna focus more into that at the, at the moment, but uh, I never felt like I was limited by options. It's that I'm limited when it comes to the options. Mm -hmm. So this is the next challenge that I am facing. But where I'm right now, I'm really happy that all the way from India, I came to United Kingdom. I did Masters in Business Administration. I'm working with the university where I did my Masters. And I'm working with a great team. And it's a great organization, I would say, the University of Greenwich. And there are many career development opportunities here. So maybe five years from now, I would be working with the University of Greenwich in one of the top positions. But wherever I'm right now, I'm really happy because um, an Indian student from a different country coming down to the United Kingdom, doing a master's in business administration, doing one year of placement and working with the university where I did my master's. All of this seems very good to me and I'm really happy where I am. So, I mean, I still got a lot of time to decide what to do next. But yeah, I'm a, as a practical person, I have al already uh, had my options in my list. So first of all, as I'm doing uh, some internships and getting the work experience, I would continue my career uh, corporate office job, I mean the PwC in the consulting same form. But in case if I get a chance to work on my business on ventures, so as I'm right now working with the generator, doing my two to three startups. So once during I finish my two more years with a degree, I will have a full I mean, full fresh plan for doing a business. So I might launch my business when I get my degree because as an international student, you cannot do officially business. So I might go for that one as well. And even in the practical, because it's I'm just finishing my undergraduation. Like after five years, once I settle, I might go for pursuing the master degree or the PhD in the future. But as of now, not right now, because as I'm already spending three years of my life, by doing a graduation course and if I go for two more years I will uh, give you like give my giving myself an excuse because uh, in the back in India like I was in the COVID time I like actually spent two to three years not doing uh, official work because I was working with my father business so at that time my study was stopped so because of the age of right now I wanted to finish my edu education as early as I can so right now my options are having an own venture business or maybe a doing a corporate job the same that I'm doing with the internship. Mm -hmm. And that works for you? Yeah, I mean it's a like win-win situation for all three options that I have. Or at the end I can go back to my country and help my father in doing business. So Yeah, got lots of options, I like it. Yeah. And maybe if you want to continue your studies, you can always do that part time. Yeah, in definitely. the future anyway. So that's it from me. Is there anything else that you wanted to mention before we end? Um, I mean, there's nothing from me, but I would say University of Greenwich is an amazing place. You can learn a lot of opportunities. I only did uh, one year of studies here and the next year was placement for me. But in these two years, I've done a lot of things. Um, so the University of Greenwich presents almost different kinds of opportunities for the students. It's just that students have to be a bit more proactive, uh, go for the opportunities attend webinars, seminars, uh, presentations, get more yourself more exposed with the university. 
A personal example I would say is that when I was working as a placement student with the Employment Directorate, um, I had a chance to give my mentoring speech, my mentee speech, because I was part of the career mentoring program. Uh, the career mentors, they really helped me uh, to pursue my placement or applying for jobs, everything, including CV preparation, cover letter, mock interviews, everything. They were the first people who helped me. So based on my mentee experience, I gave a speech. So it was this year in July. And almost all the companies in Canary Wharf and in Central London were there. Our vice chancellor and all the uh, top professionals at the university were present. And then I guess around 100 more students were there. I gave my speech and uh, at the end of the speech, I was really happy. It went really well. And I got a chance to meet a lot of professionals from the companies. Uh, they were, they congratulated me for the speech I gave, uh, the points that I raised. So it was a very good opportunity for me. So for me, it's that I always go behind the opportunities and I choose the most challenging one. Uh, it's been like that for me ever since I started my graduation. Uh, yeah. So it's an amazing place. And I'm sure that you won't regret being here for three or two years. Yeah. On the career mentoring ceremony, were you both involved in uh, that one? Yes. I guess you were there for the career mentoring, yeah, right? Yeah. 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 Tell us a little bit more about your experience with that. Well, just for anyone that doesn't know what the career mentoring so the career scheme mentoring is. Team, yeah, so the career mentoring team sits within the employability and apprenticeship directory. Mm -hmm. So if you are a student, whether it be you're a first year or a second year student or a third year student, if you're doing undergraduate degree, then if you want to meet one of the professionals from the industry that you want to be part of or work in, you can talk to the team, uh, send your register of interest form. Uh, and then the career mentors, I mean, the the, um, the advisors, they would match you up with a professional from the industry. So I chose for financial services industry and I got paid up with an investment banker from Saturn Web Banking and Corporate Investment. So I think that was the first six months I talked to her and um, she gave me a good idea about how a graduate or what the life of a graduate would be in UK once I fully graduate. And that gave me a very good idea about how I should plan my career from here to the next two years. Mm -hmm. And then uh, in my second year, when I did my placement, I wanted to choose someone outside the financial services sector because I want to get a different picture. So that was something like lateral thinking or thinking outside of the box. And I chose uh, a legal counselor from Citibank. And we discussed mostly about how to excel in, in your job, in your career how to be more productive, how to efficiently deliver your work, how to promote your your own personal brand, time management, work-life balance. So I talked about different topics and she gave me different insights from her personal life and from the life of other mentees that she had. So it was a very good experience. I mean, this is something I would say one of the unique selling points of the University of Greenwich, the career mentoring program. Students are literally getting connected with an industry professional. They can talk about anything they want. They will get a picture about themselves five years from then. So that is something every student wants to know, whether I'm going to be successful or not. The same doubts I had when I came to the University of Greenwich and they were able to solve most of my doubts. Even though I completed my MBA program and I started working with the university, I'm still looking for a mentor within the university so that they would literally help me whenever I have a doubt about my own career, about my choices or the decisions that I have to make. So yeah, it's a very good opportunity. And is it six months in duration with each mentor? Uh, so it is? usually lasts for a term, I would say. Okay. Uh, I'm not entirely sure about the months, but I'm sure that it, it's for a term. For a term, okay. Yeah. And if you are willing to continue with the same mentor, then you can go for the second wave. And then there's the career mentoring program for the next year as well. Mm -hmm. At the end of the career mentoring, there will be a ceremony where your mentor and the mentees will be present and all the university professionals, the, the companies will be present. So it's a very huge networking platform. That's where I met uh, the vice president from JP Morgan. So he came towards me and then he appreciated for my mentor experience. So it's a very good networking platform. And I would say to the students to go for it and maximize your uh, whatever benefits that the university is offering to you. Yeah. yeah. It's not, it's just not the uh, career mentoring program. We have the placements and internship team that I was part of. We have the employer engagement team. They are the ones who bring all the employees to the campus. They organize events with the university. We have the jo uh, student job shop team. They are the ones through which the students get the student ambassador roles. 
Then we have the employee desk advices. They are the professionals and the experts who help you write your CV, cover it, uh, preparing for mock interviews. I guess I have done almost five mock interviews when I was preparing for my placement. So it was just not limited to one advisor. It was with different advices. So different advices gave me different opinions about my own interview skill. So it gives me different picture. Mm-hmm. I used almost all the resources that were available at the university, which I thought I want this. Yeah. So it's always a win-win situation for me when it comes to pursuing MP from the University of Greenwich. Thank you very much, both of you, for coming on to our podcast today. It's been really nice to hear about your experience, about your individual stories, and how you got to where you are today. Thank you for having us. <laughs> Thank you. No worries. I wish you the best of luck in the rest of your studies and in your in the start of your career now. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. You can find our podcast on Spotify, Apple, and Google Podcasts. Subscribe to never miss an episode.